Hi folks, welcome to Set Apart Homestead. This is Travis. So today, I want to talk about an apocalyptic event or something that is happening with our, I guess you could say environment, um, that uh, could definitely change a lot of things for us. And it's something that's very seldom talked about, even amongst uh, prepper communities, um, uh, online, uh, even conspiracy theorists and things like that. It's something that doesn't get a lot of talk, you know. There's, there seems to be certain subjects that are cool to talk about and cool to prep and plan for, and then there's others that's not. And a lot of times the ones that are not cool and popular are the ones that have the highest probability um, of happening and affecting us. And this is one of those, and it is uh, the Grand uh, Solar mi Minimum. Uh, and I'll get to that in a little bit of explaining a little bit more about that for those of you that may not know what it is or may not have heard of it. Um, so a solar minimum and a solar maximum is something that happens also, sorry, uh, I'm gonna also talk about CMEs, coronal mass ejections. Um, and we'll talk about that also later on in the video. So anyway, so solar minimums and solar maximums uh, are things that happen naturally with the sun. Uh, it's cyclical, every 11 years, the sun goes through this cycle of increased solar uh, activity, sunspots, increased radiation, heats up a little bit hotter, and it you know cools back down. And it goes through this cycle every 11 years. And what it is, it's the uh, magnetic poles are shifting on the sun. And it does this every 11 years, and that's just normal. And there are some effects to us because of that, but usually they're fairly minor. Um, you know, not, not too, too much that we notice. But um, what can happen, and let me point this out, that even though on the solar minimum, which is the, the decreased activity, uh, the decreased radiation, uh, slightly cooling, uh, less sunspots, um, that's where you kind of you could see a slight cooling of the earth usually it's very very small maybe less than a degree up to one degree uh, cooling but the what does happen is on that minimum the solar minimum that CMEs coronal mass ejections are uh, increased the probability the possibility of those increase um, and I'm not quite sure I understand the full science behind why that is um, but that, that is the case that uh, because of the cooling of the sun that it, that it can open uh, coronal openings and have ejections which uh, as I'll talk about here in a little bit later are similar to an EMP, at least the effects to us, but actually usually much worse, much greater than an EMP. It'd be like a big mag mega super EMP, but we'll talk about that later. So that's your solar minimum and solar maximums, and that happens all the time. I mean, that's, we just go through that. But <clears throat> on occasion, usually every few centuries, every 400 years, typically, but you know, it's, it can happen a lot, uh, you know, less time in between than 400 years. Uh, you will have, if you have several of these solar minimums in a row that just continue to get weaker and weaker and weaker, you can have what's called a grand solar minimum. And it has been, um, in the last 400 years, they have, they have they've traced it back 400 years. There's a lot of data on it in the last 400 years. And then there's some data that goes back, you know, much further. Uh, into possibly the last thousand years. And if you look at that data, every time there has been a grand solar minimum, it is when there's been a major shift in the Earth's climate. Um, usually, you know, things like, many of you have heard um, the uh, mini ice age, things like that typically happen during that grand solar minimum time. Well, <clears throat> we are getting ready to go through, or actually, by most scientific accounts, we are already in the beginning stages of that grand solar minimum. Uh, and it will start to peak out uh, next year is, is typically, or is what uh, NASA scientists are saying, that by 2020 we will kind of peak out on the grand solar minimum and very potentially stay within a grand solar minimum for the next 40 plus years. No one's talking about that, are they? Um, you know, this isn't something from my understanding. Now, let, let me just say, I'm, I'm no scientist. I'm kind of a, 
a, a geeky kind of guy about science, but I'm, I'm, I don't fully understand all of it. So the research, what I'm telling you is research that I have done, and I've tried to make sure that I've done it on pretty legitimate uh, sources so that I'm not, you know, finding some fake news or some, uh, you know, conspiracy theory that's not scientifically based. A lot of it's from NASA, which I guess that's debatable on how accurate NASA's information is. But anyways, the point is, is that it, uh, we are in the beginning stages of this grand solar minimum. And as a grand solar minimum, what that's going to do, and, and honestly, we don't really know the full effects of it. Um, there's predictions that it could get pretty bad, that it's going to cause a cooling um, of the Earth's atmosphere. We could... Um, be looking at another mini ice age uh, and if you, for those of you that aren't familiar with that uh, you could look it up it was um, during the 17 and early 1800s I think maybe it went further back maybe 16 17 and early 1800s uh, was when the early ice age or the mini ice age is what they call it happened um, that happened during the colonial period of, of America and you can kind of read about how it affected that there was, you know, much harsher, longer winters. Um, the growing seasons were drastically reduced. Uh, you know, this sort of thing happened. So from everything my understanding is, is that this isn't something that's like, you know, a prediction or a possibility. It's happening. It, it is, in fact, happening. Um, and because you're not hearing a whole lot about it, it makes me wonder, you know, are they, they, you know, do they know that it's going to get really bad and they know that there's really not a whole lot of things that can be done to, 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 to prepare for it so that it's better off just to not talk about it and, and pick up the pieces in the aftermath. Um, I don't know. But what I can tell you is, is um, some of it's just logic. Uh, other is what I have read. That if we go through this grand solar minimum where we have a reduction of uh, Earth's radiation or sun's radiation on the Earth, a reduction of sunlight, um, reduction of heat, all this type of thing, it's going to greatly affect uh, farming. It's going to greatly affect growing uh, plants and growing food. And our system, as I've talked about in other videos, our system of our food system and agricultural system is, is actually quite fragile um, because it's so mono uh, cropped like, uh, you know, it's all based upon, you know, basically soybeans, corn, and wheat. I mean, yeah, there's other things, potatoes and other things, but it's, it's really based on just three or four main crops and that's it. Uh, whereas, you know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, it was, it was broken up and each farm grew different things. And so if something happened, it didn't wipe out the entire industry. Whereas today, it wouldn't take much to wipe out the entire industry. Um, and then what that means is we have no food. Uh, so growing these crops, it's going to become very difficult during this time if it's as bad as what some predictions are. And they know it's happening, but they don't know yet how bad it's going to get. Uh, and so that's the, the uncertainty part. So what does that mean for us? Um, I don't have a whole lot of time to go into all the details because it would take a lot for the video. So I want to at least mention it and talk about it enough to get you to go online and start researching it yourself, the grand silver minimum. Um, but it's something that you need to definitely be aware of and definitely be planning for. Uh, a lot of their predictions are that, um, it, depending on where you're located, that uh, you, you're not going to be able to grow food unless you have a greenhouse. And if you live in more of the northern states, then you're probably, you know, SOL, you're, you're probably not going to be able to grow much at all because, you know, the climates of, say, Illinois and Iowa, the upper Midwest, are going to be much like, you know, northern parts of Canada. Whereas the, the middle parts of the United States, say, you know, Missouri, Kansas, you know, Virginia, uh, places like that are going to be uh, very similar to the northern states. You know, Missouri's climate may be like uh, Minnesota's climate. Uh, Texas climate and uh, Arkansas and Louisiana's climate may be, you know, more like northern Missouri's climate. I, I don't know these things for certain. These are just some things that I've read, and it could be even worse than that. Um, we could see a much harsher, harsher ice age uh, that could happen. And I'm not talking something, you know, massive, but, you know, a, a harsher mini ice age. Like I said, what will happen is still uncertain. But the fact that there's a, you know, grand solar minimum happening, it is quite certain of that. 
So it's something to be prepared for. We need to, uh, you know, really take uh, a serious look at where we're living, for one thing. And I know that's difficult for a lot of people. A lot of people are like, hey, I can't move where, from where I'm at. My job's here, my family's here. You know, I've got this money invested in this house and all this kind of stuff. Um, but if where you're living is not going to be livable in a few years or sustainable, then maybe you need to cut your losses and move. I don't know, it's just something to think about. I know that's a difficult one. That's probably one of the hardest things to decide on when looking at you know, preparedness and homesteading and self-sufficient lifestyle is just up and moving to a completely different location. Uh, something else that you're gonna have to really focus on is your food supply. You're going to need food supplies, uh, especially you know, your grains and stuff, which are easy and cheap. They're cheap to buy and they're easy to store long term. So there's not really a big excuse of why you can't get them. You need that stuff on hand to kind of get you through to where you can start figuring out, you know, what you can grow. Uh, I would encourage you if you have the space to look into building a greenhouse. They're not really that expensive. Um, I built one a couple of years ago. It was a 10 by 15 foot greenhouse, roughly. And most of the stuff I scavenged, I think I had, I had less than $100 in it. I know that for certain had you know less than a hundred bucks in a 10 by 15 foot greenhouse now is that enough to sustain your whole family probably not but um, it's definitely a start so um, you know look into things like greenhouses so the other thing about the grand solar minimum is that it also increases the uh, potential for CMEs now CME is where you know an opening in the Sun releases parts of the inner cor coronal and if it is directed at Earth and not just out in space. It could have massive, you know, damaging potential to this planet. Uh, think of an EMP on steroids because it's, it's, it's dumping masses of amounts of radiation uh, into our, in, directed right at the Earth. And so it could potentially, you know, disrupt a lot of functions. Uh, in fact, there's some predictions that, you know, some CMEs could, you know, knock the whole planet or at least parts of the planet back to the, you know, the Middle Ages. So these are also things to think about. And it's like I said earlier, it's kind of funny that some of the things that have the higher potential of, of you know, possibility are typically the things that aren't talked about as much. You know, the people are talking about, you know, uh, you know, zombie apocalypse and things like that. And yet the stuff that, that have a pretty good chance of happening uh, don't get mentioned very much. So uh, start doing some research into Grand Solar Minimum and into CMEs that are caused by Grand Solar Minimum. La uh, earlier this year, a group of NASA scientists issued a report that they predicted that 2020 would be a, uh, the peak year and um, had a high probability or possibility of uh, major damaging and catastrophic CMEs at the earth that they you know that it's it's very possible from their predictions and everything that's you know kind of lining up that 2020 uh, which is just a few months away a couple of months uh, could be very damaging so you know we're not talking you know decades away we're talking months away that you know or, or a year away things like that that uh, we could be looking at some serious uh, earth-changing things. Uh, if we go through a massive climate shift, you know, the, the Earth's poles are already shifting some. I mean, they're, they're actually shifting quite a bit. Uh, and then if we go through a major climate shift, which is, ha happens, that's just what happens on this planet. It's cyclical. Uh, I'm not talking about man-made, you know, climate change and global warming or anything like that. Just the Earth's climate changes. It's, it goes through cycles. Um, and us modern people have never experienced a major cycle change. And our whole system, everything, everything from food to technology to transportation, everything is based, is dependent upon the planet that we live, in, live on um, uh, being pretty much the same and in, 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 a, in a, you know, calm state. And if all of a sudden all this changes, you know, magnetic poles shift, electromagnetic uh, activity increases, radiation activity increases, cooling of the earth, all these things that start would start happening at once, 
um, could cause a, a, a massive, massive amount of chaos and destruction for our planet. Uh, so, you know, I'm not, you, most of you that have watched me often know that I'm not the, you know, uh, the sky is falling kind of guy. I don't get on here and I don't try to fear monger people. But it's definitely something that I, th I think that you need to know about because the potential risk there is quite high, I believe, as compared to many other, uh, you know, scenarios that we may look at as uh, preparedness-minded people. So uh, start looking into the Grand Solar Minimum and the CMEs. Grand Solar Minimum, you know, we're pretty much in it and uh, I, I was reading one article that's saying that they're, they're predicting that it could last well into the year 2055. Uh, many of us will probably be dead and gone by then. So uh, 2055 is a, a, a long time that we would have to live under that. And, and if it was as bad as some predict, uh, we could see you know, massive reduction in population numbers, um, drastic shifts in our environment and growing seasons. Um, it, it could be extremely devastating for, you know, the whole planet. So I'm not trying to, again, to fear monger everyone, get everyone all afraid, but, man, sorry, I think I've got something in my eye if you guys notice me struggling over here. It, it is something that we all need to think about. We need to prepare and start doing your own homework and, and also be careful of where you find your information because there is going to be a lot of, crazies out there talking about stuff that's not true. So anyways, uh, it's a video I wanted to make. I, I probably, because I feel like I just barely skimmed the surface, uh, and there's so much to talk about with both of these that, that are kind of connected, the Grand Solar Minimum and, and CME. So I'll probably, as time goes on, do more videos kind of detailed uh, on both of these subjects. But for now, I just wanted to get the information out there. And, and for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, you know, encourage you to get online and start some research and, and start adding that to, you know, the knowledge of that to your, your tool chest. All right. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.